Hey everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project with Baby Cat. Hey, look at the camera. Baby Cat had to show her face today because I got a box in the mail. This is quite exciting for off-grid solar living. This is from Ames Power. The idea Chris and I were brainstorming, remember Chris from New York, we're brainstorming about how to um, run more solar power, but since I'm working during the day and not home as much, not have to worry about your solar panel or your batteries being wrecked if there's a cloud passing over or something. We came up with a really cool device. Now, most off-grid homes have some form of a backup, something, whether it be a generator or grid tie or something. Well, Chris had this idea pop into his head about a grid-assisted solar power system. And I contacted Ames Power, and they sent me a power uh, AC converter. So this is going to be really exciting how I'm going to use this. Now you guys all remember Ames, my favorite little inverter that I had there at the uh, off-grid tiny house on wheels. Super efficient and I use that heavily in my electronic shop where I don't have a lot of power to burn. So that really efficient inverter is very good there. Now I'm going to put this box back over here so you can see. So what we have here is not much bigger than the uh, inverter that I had back then. Or that I have in there. What we have here is a plug in the wall, 110 volt powered battery charger, essentially. A massive battery charger. So this is a 120, why am I not getting myself in the video here? I'm looking at my camera upside down. This is a 120 volt to 24 volt output battery charger, which is going to maintain my batteries so I can continue to use even more solar power while I'm gone and not worry at all about destroying the batteries during uh, if a storm passes by. Well, guys, here we are again. All right. I opened this up this morning and I hadn't had my coffee. And uh, here I am back to it. Much more energy in me. So we got a ground here, ground lug. I also spent some time looking at the uh, the manual. And here's the positive and negative battery output terminals. Here you got a power on and off and a BTS. This is a temperature sensor you can plug in here, an optional temperature sensor. So that just like my solar charge controller, my MPPT, you can um, accurately keep an eye on the temperature of the battery bank so that's good to have I'm probably gonna get that later and it's especially good for extreme summer and extreme winter temperatures so the device can always know the status of your battery bank now turning it around here there's some more controls there's um, there's your status lights tells you the charge status and what's going on at any given time. There's your switches, dip switches, for setting your battery types. And there's various battery types you can set it for. And your charging current. By adjusting this dial, you can adjust how much current the device pr puts out to your batteries up to its maximum rated output. So this can handle open lead acid, gel, AGM batteries and LifePo 4. Look at that, that's interesting. So there's all your status 
indicators, all the things the LEDs can show you, the status of the device. The BTS battery temperature sensor port, so that's what that's short for. And this is over 80% efficient, this device. So, high efficiency. Now, I can't wait to get this out there. I'm going to have to get myself some wires and uh, get this in a protective box. So, we'll be back when I get some time for this. But for now, I'm going to go over all the paperwork and consider my uh, installation of this and where where it's going to go on my off-grid battery bank for best results because we've got here a AC power cord that needs to be plugged into grid power and then it's got to be close obviously it's got to be really close to the battery bank because your D, your 24 volt DC outputs these are going to have to be really thick cables so I'm probably going to mount this right on the outside of the battery box along with my solar power charge controller and in their own isolated box so that'll go right there along with everything else get myself some cables get a fuse to go in between and we'll be good to go um, I'm also gonna have to get myself a long extension cord to go from the house to the charger now with a clear head and more caffeine in my system what happens here how this is gonna work out this plugs into the grid power and it acts like you're in the situation I'm going to have it in. This is going to act like your generator, your off-grid backup system. This device here is going to be hooked up to your battery bank and maintains the charge on the battery bank. Now today when it's overcast for example the solar panels are not producing as much energy as they normally would. In that case if we're drawing off the solar battery bank the eventually will drain the batteries even on an overcast day like this and especially at night that's where this device kicks in uses a little bit of grid power to maintain your batteries now the advantage in this case a lot of people are going to be wondering well now you're going back on the grid see the advantage is actually then we can have a higher standard of living here in our off-grid tiny house because we can plug in anything we want and not worry about cloudy days or rainstorms and let things run because I'm working off the property now I had to shut everything down every day when I left which is awkward now with this device I won't have to stress about it I can leave Melanie doesn't know how to operate and watch the the battery so she doesn't just I can't leave her in charge, so I always had to shut everything down. Hook this up, run everything I want, leave and not worry a bit about the battery bank. So that's going to be great. Anyway, I hope that's clear. I'm trying to explain slowly and clearly for you all how this is going to work. It is going to be a grid-assisted off-grid solar power setup now. And I'm probably going to get two of these because they max at, at 24 volts, they max at 37.5 amps, which is a little over 600, 600, 700, 800 watts. I have to do the math here. Uh, probably about 700 watts. So I'm going to need more. But then again, my, um, my, my draw in our house isn't that high anyway. So yeah, we'll see how it turns out. We'll still have to wash laundry when it's sunny and we'll be pulling straight off the solar panels instead of this so this is just going to be an assistance to run our fridge which is uh, if you guys remember is a chest freezer converted to a refrigerator that uses hardly any power we'll be able to run my my computers all the time we'll be able to run my uh, all small devices and all lighting on the solar battery bank and just have this in, as a backup so sunny days don't worry about a thing we can run everything extra we want cloudy days we can reduce what we're running to reduce how much this is drawn from the grid to maintain the battery bank so pretty cool our LED lights and stuff won't draw much at night anyway we're used to efficient living but it's just a nice backup now that having been said another thing that's gonna be great about this for you 
and for beginners, my thoughts are, and I'm going to be putting this all together for you to show you how this works. You are, let's say you are new to off-grid solar power and you want to get in, get started and you really don't have a lot of knowledge and you're afraid you're going to wreck your batteries. Most likely in your first time around people are going to wreck their battery bank experimenting because they don't know how to monitor it properly. I'm going to advise everybody gets one of these devices when they're experimenting and learning because this thing will maintain your, your batteries no matter what you're doing and no matter what the weather is. So you can learn how to build your off-grid solar power system without risking the damage to your batteries. As long as you don't exceed the outputs of your solar panels and or this at the same time, you should be good. I'm going to explain all of that later and uh, so you don't have to worry about it and teach you how to set up a system like this to learn with uh, less risk to your, your battery bank. So, alright guys, going to be uh, doing some follow-up videos and we'll teach you how it works. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. And uh, might as well throw in how to get off the grid for $5,000 or less because this is definitely going to be part of the package. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll put the links down below. You can go ahead and start getting ready and get these right away. Bye.